Have you ever had one of those moments where you hear somebody say something kind of just, just on the edge of being able to hear them clearly and, and it sounds like they're saying something totally crazy or insane and you're like, no, 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 that, that can't be what they said. Well, that relates to this cocktail because the name of it is the Bin and Gitters. It's a gin daiquiri or fresh gin gimlet, you know, depending upon how you want to think about it, with a float of bitters on it. So you would think of it as being a gin and bitters, but because Sasha Petrosky loved his wordplay, it's called a Bin and Gitters. And yeah, you heard that right. It doesn't really make sense. As you could have guessed from the intro, this drink is from Regarding Cocktails by Sasha Petrosky. And the more I think about it, there are quite a few recipes you could reference in describing this drink, and I'm not quite sure which one to use. Is it a gin daiquiri with bitters? Is it a fresh gimlet with bitters? Is it a Queen's Park swizzle with gin? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Starting with a shaker, this thing is pretty simple. You need three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, one ounce of fresh lime juice, and two ounces of gin. Now, without having a Lewis bag, I'm going to try using a second cocktail shaker to make some crushed ice. First, I'll add two very small pieces of ice to my first tin and shake to mix the cocktail. It doesn't need too much, and the small amount of ice will produce some negative pressure inside the tin to help prevent leakage. Now for the crushed ice. I'll crack a couple of big cubes into my second shaker. and then shake it as violently as I can. Well, it's not great, but it'll work. Next, add the cocktail to the glass and top with crushed ice. Make more crushed ice. Fish the big pieces out of the way and top the glass with more ice. Then it's time to float a healthy layer of bitters on top and then continue adding more ice until you have a small cone on the top of the drink. Finally, add a lime wedge and a straw, and you are ready to drink. All right, well, moment of truth. Time to give this thing a taste and find out how good it is. Cheers. Mmm, that's yummy. So the big thing that I'm noticing is that this tastes kind of like a mojito, or more accurately, I think it tastes a lot like a JFK Harris, which tastes like a mojito, but doesn't, doesn't use the same ingredients. It kind of tricks your brain. And this thing does that as well. It's got like this mint flavor and bitterness that you would expect from muddling mint in a cocktail, but obviously there's no, there's no mint in this unless there's mint in Angostura. One thing I will say is that when I was squeezing that lime and trying to get every drop of juice out of it, it had like almost a minty aroma to it as well, which was kind of surprising and, and it smelled really nice. That is one thing, when you squeeze the crap out of lime hulls, you get a lot of the lime oils into your juice and then into your cocktail. It can really open up that lime flavor and make it a lot more intricate and complex in a really pleasing way. I'm gonna go in for another sip. So that Rainier gin I'm using is really playing with the Angostura to provide a like savory vegetal kind of note. So on a second taste, it does have that mint flavor, but not, not exactly mint. It tastes like something that's trying to taste like mint, but isn't mint. I, I don't know, I, I keep saying the word mint over and over again. <laughs> So it's a really nice balance of sweet and sour, and obviously you can taste the gin in there. But if you serve this to somebody and they didn't know that it had gin in it, they might be tricked into thinking it was a rum cocktail. Now, I think you'd have to be pretty inexperienced for that to happen, but it tastes so much like a mojito that it just, it, it's not making you think, you know, gin botanicals, that kind of thing. It just, it doesn't hit that note. Obviously all of that flavor is in there, but combined with the Angostura, and I really do think over squeezing those limes to get every drop of juice out of them brought a lot of flavor as well and i don't know it's kind of it's, it's kind of 
more like a mojito, which is really pleasant. And you can see how the Angostura is starting to sort of drift its way down through the crushed ice. It probably wouldn't have done that if I tasted this immediately after making it, but it sat here for a couple minutes while I set up and did the, the thumbnail and everything. It probably would have been a little bit different if I had tasted it while that layer was perfectly fresh on the top. And maybe if I had a finer crushed ice. Sometimes experiments in the kitchen or making cocktails don't don't work out exactly the way you want them to. But anyway, my point is, is that the evolution of this cocktail is kind of part way through and I, I wish I could have tasted it right off the bat. But either way, it's really, really good. I know I keep coming back to this same thing, but if you're in the mood for a mojito or a daiquiri and you don't have any rum, if you've got some good gin, this hits the spot really well. It scratches that same itch, if I could say it that way. If you like the video, hit the button. If you don't like the video, hit the other button and let me know why in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Luke, this is the Homemade Edition, and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.